Hi guys, this is Madhav. I'm recording this quick tutorial on a concept called file paths. This is something that I saw many programmers were just throwing around whenever they were giving code tutorials. But for beginners, just learning to do things like opening files or learning to make websites it was just way too much all at once to try and figure out what this kind of crazy notation means at the same time as trying to learn the coding concepts of that particular language. So I'm creating this tutorial to explain all this stuff and I'm going to do so without any code whatsoever, without any references to one specific programming language. And the goal is to give you a simple introduction to this thing that is used in all programming languages. Now, to start off, before we get through all of these symbols, uh, the first question to be asking is, what is the use of learning about this? What's the point of this thing called file paths? Well, if you wanna just open the files app, on your computer, you see that whenever you want to access some particular file, any piece of data, what you have to do is you open up the app and then you know you go to some folder, then you go to another folder, you might go through a few folders, and then if you don't find what you're doing, you know, you go around until you figure out where the file is, and then you touch it, you click it, whatever, to make it open. The issue is that if you're a computer, you cannot just, you know, click on this app and then that app and you cannot, you know, graphically select which file you want to open. This makes it difficult to do, well, pretty much anything on your computer. So this is why for computers, instead of having these files software you know, these applications that you can click around, they need you to use very particular notation to let them know where do I go specifically in terms of folders and files to get the thing that I need. Now, this could be like, I wanna open an image in Python. It could be I want to save some data to a text file in a Linux script. It doesn't matter exactly what you're doing. The key point is you're specifying where on a computer to find a given piece of data. Now, we can talk about some of this notation, these slashes and dots and whatnot. The first thing to note is that when you're learning about file parts and folders, you'll often hear the term directory. It just means the same thing as a folder. And you'll often hear this thing called the root directory in particular. Imagine the root directory as, you know, just this thing that pops up when I first open my files app. It's like the home folder. It's the folder where all the other folders are located. Technically, what I'm particularly doing here, this folder that I see, you know, with my name on it, it's not exactly the home folder, but whatever. Let's leave complexities aside. The key point is when you first open up your files app, when you first open up the most basic folder, you reference it with this single slash. That means you're in the root directory, the home folder, and it's like the root because it's like where all the other files are built on top of, like the root of a tree. Now, this concept of a root directory, you know, the home folder that I'm in, it's different from what we call a working directory. The working directory is whatever folder I have open at any given moment. So let's say I open the open folder, you know, convenient that I named it that. Now, the root directory hasn't changed. In my hypothetical example, it's still this home folder with my name on it. But the working directory, the folder I have open, it's now, you know, this, this folder called open. 
I could go to a folder called Arduino. Okay, now my working directory has changed. It's this new folder, but the root directory is still, you know, the home folder. So what do I do if I want to tell the computer to open this folder right here? You know, this folder called open. Well, I can't, I can't just say, give it like the slash symbol. That's only going to get it to open this home folder that we're currently in. If I want it to open this new folder right here, then I have to add on the name of the folder after the slash symbol. So in my hypothetical example where this is the home folder, the root directory, if I gave this piece of data, this file path to the computer, it would know to look in this open folder. This is generally how file parts are built up. You just have folders and files after a, one after the other. So for instance, if I now am in the open folder and I want to uh, specify the computer, this file, I want to tell it to look at file.txt, then I can just add on the name, as you can see, followed by another slash. So this is how file parts keep on getting built up. Let's say I wanted to go, you know, some more levels down. I could go to the saved folder. Now I add on a saved. That's the name of the folder. Then I add on assignments, another folder. Now I add on math. Nope, there's nothing here. Okay, let me try adding on science. Here we are. So the science folder and then my file name, assignment.pdf. So this is our first example of how we build up file paths. We might have a first slash that represents the home folder, the place where all the other folders are located. And then we just specify at each level the folders that come after one after the next until we get to the file we want. Now this type of file path one that starts with a slash is what is called an absolute file path. The reason it's absolute is I could tell the computer to go to this file path no matter where on the computer I am. It doesn't matter if I'm in this science folder and you know I, want, I am viewing this, uh, this file right here. I could I could tell the computer, okay, go look for the math folder and some file in there, you know, hypothetical .txt. It doesn't matter if I'm in this folder, I have that open. It doesn't matter if I'm in this folder, I have this open. It doesn't matter if I'm in this folder, I have this open. It doesn't matter where I am because I'm telling the computer, you know, First go to the home folder, then go to the open folder, then the saved one, and so on and so on. The folder has a set of instructions to get to the file I want that will work in absolutely every case, no matter where on the computer I'm located. Now let's contrast this to um, a relative file path. As you can imagine, the word relative there, it means that we're talking about giving the computer a set of instructions to get to a file relative to the current folder we have open. Let's talk about it with an example. So right now we're in the homework and then science directory. Let's go to the homework and math directory right here. So I'm going to create first this absolute file path that set of instructions, you know, go to the home folder, then open, saved, assignments, math, until you get to the math folder, then open this file in the math folder. An alternative way and a shorter way that I could get to this file right here is right now you see I already have the math folder open. I could just put in dot and then slash, which means the current folder I have open, as I said earlier, that also might be referred to as the working directory. And then I just specify the file name. 
So these two parts in my hypothetical example are saying the exact same thing. And the difference is if I had, you know, another folder open, let's say I'm in homework. Now, if I told the computer to open, you know, this file, it wouldn't know how to do that because there's no uh, week1.pdf in the current folder I have open. This absolute URL or this absolute file path, it would still work. The other one, it wouldn't. That's the key difference. And so when I am being lazy, when I know, you know, which folder does a computer have open in any moment, then I can use these relative file paths to shorten the commands that I'm giving. Now, let's talk about this dot dot slash symbol. So let's say I created a file here that I'm gonna call um, example dot png. So I have an image over here and I currently have the math folder open. How can I tell the computer to go look at this image in the homework folder when I only have the math folder open. One way to do this, of course, is just use absolute URLs as ever. So I would go tell the computer to go to the homework folder. And that should have been a homework instead of assignment in the earlier example. Anyways, Let's say I get the computer to go to the homework folder. Then I don't need to open the math folder anymore. So I just take off the rest of the file path and I just add in the example.png. Okay, so that's one way to refer to this example.png image. What's another way to do it? The other way to do it would be to use relative file paths. So I have the math folder open, its parent folder the, the, the folder that contains the math folder is homework, okay? And the thing that I'm trying to get to is homework slash example.png. Okay, well, that's kind of useful. What I can do is I can specify the dot dot slash symbol where it just stands for the parent folder. And what that means is, okay, I'm in the math folder dot dot slash go up to the homework folder the parent folder and now go to example dot png whoops so when i have the math folder open both of these things mean the same thing both of these file paths the relative and the absolute they tell the computer to look at the same file this one gives the computer an approach to dig all the way back from the root folder to the specific file. This one tells the computer, hey, relative to the current folder that's open, just go up to the parent folder and then look at an example.png file in that folder. We can, of course, combine multiple of these parent things. So let's say I wanted to go to this folder saved and I wanted to access a document that I'll call documents.pdf very creatively. Now, if I'm in the math folder, how can I get to this document.pdf in the saved folder? Well, one way to do it as ever, go through the absolute file path. So from the home folder that's represented with a slash in my hypothetical example to the open folder, then the saved folder. And then from there, I just want to access document.pdf in that saved folder. So I just type in document.pdf. The other way to do it if I have this math folder open is I could look at what is the parent of the math folder? Well, it's assignments. What is the parent of assignments? It's saved. And by parent again, I mean the folder that contains the folder that I'm referencing to. So if I go up two levels, 
if I go to the parent of the parent folder, then I end up at the saved folder. And then I can reference documents.pdf. So again, both of these, both of these relative and uh, absolute file paths, they mean the exact same thing. So that's basically what you need to know to interpret something like this. This kind of command just says, take the current folder you're in, go to its parent, go to the parents of that parent, then go down to a long folder that is contained in this parent of parent folder, and then a confusing folder that is located within the long folder, and then a folder folder that is located within the confusing folder. And in the folder folder, you will find a file that's named file.txt, um, again, very creatively. So now that you know about file parts, you should be better able to understand weird Python commands and JavaScript commands and HTML URLs and whatnot. And they all, all of them use this exact same syntax plus or minus a few extra symbols, a, a few extra special symbols they might throw in. So I hope that helps you without too much, you know, confusing coding language perks or whatever to worry about.